Hi guys, it's Ricky from Ricky's Guitar here today to tell you the 10 most important chords that all beginner guitarists need to know. These 10 chords mean you can play songs. Here are the first five chords. Now, it's by no coincidence that the first five chords you need to learn are the caged chords. These are the chords from the caged system. These caged chords are the five major chords, which are the C chord, the A chord, the G chord, the E chord and the D chord. These are the master chords that you need to be able to play songs and also to work out all the other chords. This song, Sultans of Swing by Dire Straits. I don't know if you know it. If you do, then you will have heard this lyric before. It says, look at Guitar George, he knows all the chords. The reason Guitar George knows all the chords is because he knows how cage chords work. Anybody who says the cage system is rubbish or poo-poo's it, they are the equivalent in my mind as flat earthers. They are denying the existence of the cage chord system. It's there and regardless of whether they think it's valuable or not, they are using it. Enough of a rant from me about the cage system. It's beautiful and it shows the elegant framework that exists with the fretboard. So it is beneficial for you to learn it. So without further ado, let me show you the first five chords that you need to learn. First chord you need to learn is the C chord. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set off on a bit of a preamble. I'm going to pre-qualify some things here. We need to make sure that when we play our chords, we position our fingers in the sweet spot on the fret. If you don't, the fret will buzz. You will get an awful sound, and we don't want that. We want you to sound really sweet when you play the guitar. We want to get behind the fret wire here in the fret. So this is the back of the fret. This is the front of the the fret. We can either be in the front of the fret or in the middle of the fret, but if we're at the back of the fret, that's the hardest place to hold the string down. That's where you have to really press down, and when you have to do that, then it will hurt your fingertips. So, we want to be able to press down here. It means that because you don't have to press down as hard here, then this will be an easier place for you to get a good sound out. The reality is that this fret wire is acting like this head nut. Here, this is the head nut, this black strip here. This here is the fret wire. So each fret wire consequently becomes a new head nut, shortens the length of the string and makes the pitch of the string go up. This is up the neck. If I play this open thin E string and then press at the first fret, then press at the second fret, then the third fret and the fifth, the pitch is going up. But also the fret that I am playing at, the number is going up. So one, two, three, four, five. So the first chord, the C chord, has a specific shape. It has a diagonal shape. What I'd say is look in the description below, download the PDF that is there for you to be able to figure out these shapes and to know what it is that you're meant to be doing. I will even put in the order that you place your fingers on. This is really important because what you want is one way of playing the chord. You don't want two ways because if you have two ways, then what happens is you have to make a decision. You don't need to be making decisions in the moment. You want to play one chord and you want to play it well. The first chord we're going to focus on here is the C chord. And what we're going to do is we're going to place the fingers on in a specific order. We're going to place finger one, finger two, and finger three. But the first finger, we want to think Think of it as a scout finger. So the scout always leads the way. And this first finger here is our scout finger. This is the C note that we're holding here on the first fret of the B string. Once we have that scout, we're going to place the second finger on. I actually want you to notice that my second finger is actually holding down the D string at the second fret right up next to that sweet spot. But the tip of that finger is also touching the A string. And that's okay because when when I put my third finger on, anything behind that third finger is useless. So it doesn't matter if that finger touches on there. That gives me more room to be able to have that G string ring clear. It means my second finger won't end up fouling on the G string. And I also do the same thing here on the third finger. Look at this here on the third finger. You can see that the tip of that third finger is touching the E string as well. So not only do I have contact with my A string, I have contact with my thick E string also. 
the way I could think about this is that I'm pressing down on the wood of the fretboard. I can actually feel the fretboard underneath that. But if you look at the setup of this chord, you can see my first finger's in the sweet spot. My second finger is on the D string, but it's also touching the A string because that gives me the footprint to be able to ring that G string clearly. And also I have this third finger here that is just a little bit higher on the string. And it's also touching the E string, which enables that D string that I'm already fretting here to ring clearly. This gives me a really clear C chord. It also means my E string is muted. If you have trouble with this, then you can actually stick your thumb over the top and muffin top that one. What you don't want is to press down on that note. You want this dull sound, this dull muted sound. You can get it with the third finger. If I move my third finger over and let that string open, then what I can do I can get a similar thing with the thumb as well, this grip here. It's okay to have the thumb over the top. It is okay. The rule of thumb is that thumb can go anywhere from there to round the back like this. So thumb over, thumb at the back, it's fine. As long as it facilitates these fingertips being on the strings. Now notice the rotation that I got. This is from this flexible wrist that I want to have going on here. Look at how my thumb rotates around with it. That will do a different job. So if your fingers dictate that the thumb has to be at the back, then it makes sense to let that third finger there do all the work of muting the E string. What you don't want really, not advisable, is the thumb pointing out at nine o'clock at the back there. 12 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, not nine o'clock. Because what happens is you start to lose the ability to form a good lever, because that's why what holding chords is all about. It's all about levers and pivots. Taking that into consideration, that, ladies and gentlemen, is the C chord. So a run through and a recap on that. The first finger goes on the B string at the first fret. The second finger goes on the D string at the second fret in the sweet spot, but it's also just touching the A string to mute it. The third finger goes on the middle. Now notice this is the middle because what I'm hoping to do is reserve a little bit of space here. This will become more more important than you realize when it comes to playing the F chord later on. So this third finger is muting out the E string there. That gives me a lovely open C chord. Notice my finger, my pinky finger is sticking out like I'm having tea with the queen. So that's what we want to get going on there. We don't want that pinky finger behind there. We want that pinky out here. Let it hang out there. Just let it hang out. That's the C chord. The second chord you need to learn is the A chord. The A chord itself is very contentious. I do not like the standard grip, which is this. The standard grip and the fault of the standard grip is that the third finger, yes, that's in a great spot. The second finger is in an okay spot, but the first finger is in the most difficult place to hold a string down. Now, if you're a beginner, then that is going to hurt your fingers. And to be frank, this is a throwback to playing classical guitar. Now, classical guitar has a somewhat wider neck than an electric guitar or modern day acoustics. So what we have to do is we have to compensate for this so that this second finger and the first finger actually take up good spaces on there. And what we do is we swap those two around. We swap the index and the middle finger, we swap those two around and we scudge that first finger. And that first finger, I throw it really tightly in there so that I get a premium prime spot there. What's happened is that second finger has now gone from being in the middle of the fret to being at the front of the fret. And the first finger is now in the middle of the fret. So it means I'm gonna find it easier to hold that chord down. Now, this is especially true if you have what you deem to be fat fingers. I feel I have fat sausages. So that is going to be the easiest way for me to get that chord on. This is a little trick to enable you to be able to play the A chord very quickly and to do your changes quickly as well. I'm going to put my first finger on here and I'm going to scout that A chord using my index finger. I'm going to put the second finger on and then the third finger on. Now, because of the way that the ligaments and the tendons are made up in the fingers, I want to be able to put these two fingers on at the same time because I'm after achieving 
achieving something called blended movement. And what blended movement means is that instead of it being three steps to play the A chord, or to play any chord, in fact, what we need is blended movement for putting on all our fingers. We're reducing the steps it takes to hold down the chord. So the first finger, the second and the third finger. That's a three-step process. We want to reduce that whole process. We want it to go from being one, two, three, to being one, and we put fingers two and three on at the same time. Now, to train our fingers into the small psychomotor movements that we need to make sure that, that lands every time, once we apply that scout finger, and we get used to putting that scout finger on. So that's it. We just keep putting that scout finger on so it feels really natural. Then what we want to do is we want to do the same thing with this second and third finger because these two fingers share the same tendon group what we want to be able to do is put them on together like that so taking those two fingers off about a centimeter putting them back on again take them off put them back on again take them off put them back on again take them off put them back on again put them off put them back on again and by doing this you are programming your fingers into doing something that they have never done before but you will notice that after a short time of doing Doing this four or five times it starts to feel more and more natural and this is programming your body to do as it's told it's your body it will do as you tell it but unless you try and program it it won't do what you tell it so this is by far the easiest way of learning how to play the a chord this is going to become more useful as you realize that this first finger is also the first finger that you scout for a d chord for instance but here going back to this a put the first finger on second finger third finger that's a three-step process first finger second and third landing at the same time and what happens is the blended movement gets to the point where you put the first finger on and the second and the third finger all at the same time the familiarity of the feeling the kinesthetic of that chord will become apparent the more you do it so it becomes this thing where you put the first second and third fingers on at the same time so that ladies and gentlemen is the a chord remember look at this pinky it's still out we might need that pinky to tart up our chords and make ornamentation so we need to make sure that that pinky is free the third chord you need to learn is the g chord there are two versions of g chord first version the more traditional grip is using the third finger the second finger and the first finger now if you'll notice what i did there i scouted this chord with my third finger here i didn't use my second finger or my first finger although those fingers feel more dominant when it comes to changing chords you are going to find it easier to pivot and transition between chords if you use a G grip like this. This is the three finger grip. I'm not particularly a fan of this because the fact that there's a B there and there is a B string ringing, that clashes within the chord. It doesn't sound as harmonious and as even as a G chord using the third and the fourth finger. It's going to become more apparent when it comes to changing chords that this setup is superior because of the nature of, say, changing from a D to a G, we use the little finger there to help us bridge transitioning from a D to a G chord. That there, that's what we're after. You see how that facilitates that. So this landing the third and fourth on, if you remember when we played the A chord like this, putting that second and third finger on there together like that, we do the same thing here, simple. We take your time and you put the third and the fourth finger on there, the ring finger and the pinky. And notice that the pinky is right up next to the fret wire while the third finger is in the middle of the fret. It's in the middle of the fret for a reason because when we play the D, we want to reserve space for that little finger to be able to go in there to play that D sus four. So we practice practice that we scout those two fingers scouting those two fingers it's really important and then we put the first and the second finger on but because they share a tendon group again we put them on together at the same time and if you remember when i played my c chord what i did is i fouled against one of the other strings with the tip of my finger. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. This first finger here is over the top of the A string and it's touching the E string. That's to give me more real estate here so that I can ring this D string clearly. This G here that I'm holding with my second finger, I have gone over the top of that string again to make sure I get the 
good, clear, ringing sounding chord. Open strings, don't sound muffled or anything like that. Look at my thumb up the top there like that because it's a good comfy grip that I'm getting there. You could equally, if you need to, play that with the thumb further down at the 12 o'clock position. That's fine as well. There is no real rules with the thumb, but the classical guitarists will say, no, the thumb must be at the back. This is the problem with the chord police is they will chastise. But at the end of the day, if the chord rings clear, the chord is good. And that's the main thing. So don't worry about those chord police. Yeah, they're everywhere. I'm saying this from a 30 plus year perspective of teaching guitar. So we've got this G chord here. The fourth chord you need to learn is the E chord. And this is probably one of the easiest chords to learn. And I would suggest that this is the first chord that you learn. And the reason being is because you can hit all six strings and you will sound pretty decent from the get-go. Now look at that first finger, my scout finger. It lands on the G string first fret. My second and my third fingers, look at those. My third finger is right up next to the fret. It's in the closest position to that fret wire. And my second finger is in the middle. What can be confusing is the fact that chord diagrams show the fingers in the middle of the fret. Now, I've known students who take that literally and it has scuppered them for years and it means that they cannot play the guitar. That's the plain fact of and it's awful. We don't need that. So the first finger, the second and the third finger. And just like we do with any two finger group, this is what I call a two finger group. This two finger group here, we can lift them off and put them on and practice that and get that movement so that this will facilitate that whole blended movement idea. Essentially putting an E chord on, we put the first finger and we put the second and third fingers on. You see that? Watch. First finger goes on, second and third fingers go on. That's a two-step process. We can take it, so we go first, second, third. That's three-step process. Or we can go the scalp finger, then the second and the third on. But eventually, it will end up being a blended movement. You will put the whole chord on at once because your brain and your hands and your body knows exactly what it feels like to hold the E chord correctly. You have to take your time in placing these chords on. Do not rush and do perform these exercises putting that chord on don't put it on too quick so that it's so fast you can't focus on what's actually happening you need to be able to observe what is happening so there's the e chord there's only one real way to play that for now the fifth chord you need to learn is the d chord and what we want to do with this one is we want to place the first finger in the middle of the fret and the second finger, we are placing that close to the fret wire. So this is in the front of the fret. This is the middle of the fret. And we're going to place the third finger at the middle of the fret. Now, the reason this is important as well is you can see that these three fingers are all next to each other. They're all clumped up. They're not open like this. If the fingers are open like this, it means you have no support. If the fingers are together, grouped together, then I can take that shape off and then put it back on again with a degree of accuracy and know that it is consistent. The reason I'm placing this second finger here, this finger dictates what happens to all the other fingers. That second finger there, middle finger, that going there means that that first finger has to be at the middle of the fret. This one here goes this side because we want to reserve space for that little pinky finger to go in there because that pinky is going to facilitate changing to the G chord that we've already done. I hope you see how these chords are all linked to each other. And if you get these shapes down, then you will be able to play all the songs you want. So those are the five major chords shapes that you need to know. If you know that, then you can play songs like Hey Joe and lots of other songs using these chords. We have those five major chords. Now, major is nothing without minor because chords and notes and music, it's all about emotion. And if you listen to a song, it must trigger an emotion in you. Either makes you happy, makes you feel a little bit sad, maybe a bit happy because you're feeling sad. That can happen. But maybe you listen to some heavy metal and that makes you feel just a little bit angry, but it maybe it dissipates the anger that you might be feeling. So this is the function of music. It echoes the emotions that we as humans feel. So it makes sense to understand the emotional values. You need to have some sadness 
sad chords in there. And those sad chords are the minor chords. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at the minor chords that are based on the caged chords that we've just done before. Those five major chords, three of those major chords are really useful. Two of them less so. I'm not saying that you can't make minor chords out of the two chords, but let's get into the three minor shapes that you really need to know. We're going to look here at the A minor chord. We're going to take an A chord. Now, we could play it like this, or we could play it like this. But essentially, we are holding down the D, the G, and the B string at the second fret. This is the fifth of the chord. This is the root of the chord. And this is the third of the chord. Just a brief description. The fifth is transparent. It doesn't add any color. The root is the home note, the note that gives the chord its name. But the third here is the note that gives the chord its emotion. If I play this, then the emotion I get get is a happy chord sound. That's an A major or an A. To make it a sad sound, I need to lower that one fret. And in doing so, I take that major third to become a minor third. And this means that now if I replace those two frets again, I have to switch my fingers around. If you notice, those two frets I'm holding down with those, I end up having to hold them down with different fingers to accommodate the shift here with the first finger. That means I can then get this A minor chord. I'm strumming the same five strings from the A string down. That gives me the A minor chord and automatically you can hear that is a sad chord sound. Remember we've got this pinky out. We want to keep that out there because this is how we change to a C from an A minor. Look at that. Look how easy that is. There's the A minor. The next minor chord we're going to look at is the E minor chord. And the E minor is derived from the E chord that we have here. So remember I mentioned this thing, the fifth, the root, and the third. It's always going to be the same in these three shapes. Fifth, root, and the third. Now there's the emotion note. Take the fifth and the root away and just lay that emotion note bare. Then what you can see is that note is on the first fret of the G string. By lowering that, I get an open string. And if I replace those two fingers back, you can see I get my E minor chord. Now I like to play my E minor chord like this so that I get the hand of rock. This facilitates chord changes later on. This is a better way to play it. Trust me on this, it is much easier and it involves a lot less shifting and it incorporates economy of movement in your chord changes. Instead of playing it like this one and two grip, it's lazy at the beginning, but it's hard work later on. Make sure you hold this E minor like this. I find that this is much easier. I'm being a bit of a chord police person here myself, but I just find that students excel with this shape better later on down the line. So there's the E minor chord. And listen, I'm strumming it from the E string itself. And that gives me a sad sounding chord. And the last minor chord we're going to look at is the D minor chord. So we're going to take the D shape. And what we're going to do is, do you know what? There's a pattern forming here. And I hope you can see it. We've got the fifth, the root and the third of the chord. If I get rid of the fifth and the root and lay that third bare, you can see it's the second fret of the thin E string there. Now to make that into a minor, this is a major third right now, to make it into a minor, I lower that down to the first fret. So it's gone from the second fret down to the first fret. Major third, minor third. I replace the fifth and the third and then I put this D minor chord on here. Now it's worth noting that people struggle with the D minor because of the ligament rub, there is a bit of friction in between the ligaments with your fingers. If you put the first finger on and then try and fill it out with the fifth and the root, there putting the second and the third finger on, what you'll find is that is slow. What we want to do is we want to leverage the fact that this finger is so dominant and use it so later on we're going to be able to pull this finger off and ornament this chord. We want to put the second and the third fingers on first. It's cool because we get the hand of rock again like we had in the E minor chord, which is always awesome. But it also means this is going to serve us later on for rock power chords. If you want to do rock, then these are the ones you want to be able to play the little chord progressions for all the riffs that you love as well. So that's a D5 power chord. But when I put that first finger on, it becomes a D minor chord. So there is the D minor chord. The reason we need the E and the A minor shapes is to make bar chords later on. I'm telling you now that you do not need to learn bar chords to play songs. Now that might be an unpopular view, but at the end of the day, music is about serving the 
song. There are far too many people out there who are the code police. The thing is, if it sounds good, it's good. That's all that matters. Serve the song. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the E shape and the A shape to show you how to make the last two chords to complete the lineup of the 10 chords that you need to know to be able to play songs. And those two chords are the F chord and the B minor chord. So the F chord, there are two ways to get to the F chord. The way that we'll probably want to get to the F chord when we are in the key of C is to play this C. Here's our C that we did earlier on by putting the pink key on the third fret of the D string. Now you can see why I put that third finger in the middle of that fret. That was to reserve some space for this pinky to be able to go on the third fret of the D string here. Those two fingers are on. And what I do to get an F chord is simply drop that second finger down. It couldn't be simpler. I'm leaving out the E string here and I'm leaving out this E string here. I'm only playing the A, D, G and B strings. No E strings involved in that. If you have splendidly long thumbs, you could get your thumb over the top there. There's lots more tutorials come in with how to play the F, but this is by far the simplest way to play an F. And this is a bar chordless F. There might be the pedants out there that say that this is an F slash C, but do you know what? It's an F and it will function as a chord for you to sing over because this is about playing songs. Going back to what I was saying about the cage chord thing, if I show you this F now and I take this first finger off and slide this shape down here, I could say to you, well, what shape is that there? And you might say, hang on, Ricky, it looks quite familiar. And you can see that this F chord that we have here, the traditional F that everybody loathes and fears, is really an E chord. It's an E shape. The F shape is an E shape. Look, there's the... F. I could play it as a bar, but for today's purposes, for learning songs quickly as a beginner, without any muss, no fuss, no stress, no strain of learning how to do bar chords, that's completely another video. We play this F like this. So that's how you play an F. Let's crack on with the B minor chord. Here's how I want you to think about the B minor chord. The B minor chord is really an A minor chord that we have moved, we have transposed. Trans means move, pose means position. So if I take an A minor chord, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch my fingers around, just like I did with that F. Remember when I played that F, I played the F like this, took the first finger off, slid it back, that gives me an E shape, and then I switch it back to my original fingering there. We're gonna do a similar experiment here. So if I take my A minor chord, if you don't know the A minor chord, look in the description and you can see there I've time coded all these chords so that you know where to start and where to skip back to. So you can skip back to that A minor chord. So there's the A minor chord. I'm going to switch it. So instead of using my first, second and third fingers, I'm going to switch it so that I have my first finger free. So I'm going to need that to hold down another note. This is an A minor and chords move like notes. If I take this A minor and slide it two frets, then I put my first finger on the second fret of that thin E string and strum from my D string down. I get a B minor chord. Traditionally, this is a bar chord, but we are looking at ways of being able to play these chords without using a bar. Remember what I said, it's all about accessing the song. Now you might ask me, Ricky, why do I need to learn these 10 chords? Simply put, these 10 chords are the 10 chords that you will find in the keys of C major and G major. These are the two most popular keys that people play in because of the easiness of these chords that we've already looked at so far. It goes without saying that these chords get used the most in songwriting, and those songs that you know and love will use these chords. The chords in the key of C are C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor, and B diminished. We're not going to get involved with the B diminished because it sounds a little bit weird. Those six chords that we have left, three of them are major and three of them are minor. You must remember that as well because that's the case in all 12 keys in music. So we've looked at the key of C. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the key of G major or G. The chords in the key of G major are G, A minor, B minor, C, D, 
E minor, and F sharp diminished. It's that horrible diminished chord again. The diminished chord will always appear as the last chord that you play. And yet again, you can notice that there are three major chords and three minor chords in the key of G. So these are the 10 chords that you need to learn to be able to play lots and lots of songs.